Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this session of SAP Business One, we will see what is MRP within SAP Business One. So we'll learn about how to set up and run MRP. We will see a little introduction and basics about MRP, the advantages and disadvantages, and then its importance. We'll assume that we are using this MRP to plan the items and Finally, we will look in SAP Business One how this MRP functions. So let us quickly see the concepts of MRP. There are three primary functions of an MRP system. But here in SAP Business One, MRP is a module that we will be learning. So in general, the system MRP system helps to ensure that the appropriate materials are available for production and the necessary products are available for customers to avoid shortages. Secondly, MRP reduces waste by maintaining only the lowest possible materials, their stocks and the product level in the stocks. Lastly, an MRP system helps in planning manufacturing functions in delivery schedules and purchasing. When an MRP system is doing its job, it reduces material waste while also avoiding product shortages. Data integrity, however, is a major issue for a successful material requirement planning. The data fed into the system must be accurate, otherwise serial production errors may occur. So finally, it is a material control system that attempts to keep adequate inventory levels to assure that the required materials are available when they are needed. MRP is applicable in the situations of multiple items with complex bill of materials. MRP is not useful for job shop productions or processes that are tightly linked. Let us understand the concepts by few questions here. Let us suppose that we need to produce 100 units of product A 8 weeks from now. So starting from today until 8 week we have to have 100 units of product A. Where product A requires 1 unit of product B and 2 units of product C while product C requires 1 unit of D and 2 units of product E. So finally how many units of each type do we need? So in this example it is easy to compute the requirements of each item to produce 100 units of product A. We require product B as hundreds because A requires 1 unit of product B. For C, we require 2, 200 because a single unit of product A contains 2 unit of product C and then we require 200 units of product D and finally we require 400 units of product E. But it may seem to be simple here but it is a complicated thing that we are learning. Let us suppose that there are lead times for products that are involved. So for product A, 4 weeks of lead time is there. For product B, 3 weeks of lead time is there. For product C, 2 weeks and product D and E have 1 week of lead time. So considering the production lead time for product A is 4 weeks, we must have product B and C available at the end of week 4. Since product B has a lead time of 3 weeks, so we need to release the production of product B by the end of the first week. Similarly, when you consider product C, it needs to be released for the production at the end of week 2, while product D and E must be released for the production at the end of week 1. It may be a difficult thing for us to understand at this point of time, but later on when we see within SAP Business One, all things will be clear for us. Further moving on, a material requirement plan has to be developed with respect to product A because that is the desired product that we are looking for. So it has to be developed for product A based on the product structure of A and the lead time needed to obtain each component. Planned order releases of a parent item are used to determine gross requirements for its component items. Planned order release dates are simply obtained by offsetting the lead times. Let us see some of the advantages of using MRP. 
It helps in the availability of right material required for production that is on time, timely delivery of manufactured goods to our customers, optimal use of manufacturing resources that means that the idle time for machine and man will be reduced, decreased in capital cost due to decreased inventory levels and optimal use of production resources, collecting the business data for analysis and better planning. Now these are the general advantages of any MRP that we are talking. So there are some drawbacks of MRP. A potential drawback of the system is dependency on accurate information. That means that if you do not feed an accurate information to any MRP system, it may result in deviation in production order, deviation in the resources that are required and hence at last it, if you calculate it will be a loss that it has given to the company. Now MRP system require an accurate master production schedule and up to date inventory records to generate useful information. The system consists of a robust database that includes inventory records and production schedules. As a result, the system requires consistent maintenance. MRP system requires a considerable investment of time and capital, which may be a challenge for some organizations. Let us understand something about MRP within SAP Business One. Let us assume that our company uses material requirement planning to planning the items that we manufacture or purchase in order to maintain the required inventory levels or fulfill the customer requirements. The material requirements planning is in the most generic sense a set of planning technique that uses first the bill of materials data, inventory data and the supply input from scheduled production and purchase orders as well as the demand inputs from actual orders and forecasted order to calculate the material requirements. After MRP runs, the system gives us the recommendation for production order or purchase order that has to be fulfilled. Let us see some of the steps in SAP Business One MRP. So this is the overview slide for us. MRP process step include defining the planning data to be used in MRP. One key piece of planning data is our forecast. When we run the MRP wizard, we need to review the order recommendation resulting from the MRP run. From there, we create either production order or purchase order as and when required. In MRP, the current state of inventory is modeled through the levels of items on hand in each of the warehouse that is there, supplemented by the items that are already on the way through the purchase order or that are in the production order that is work in progress or work in production. Imagine that you manufacture printers. The printers are made up of printer head first. Then secondly, we need two memory boards and then thirdly, a power pack or a power cord which are purchased. To make our example simple, we will assume that no printers or components are currently in inventory. Also, there are no production orders or purchase orders in the system yet. Now, let us look at the demand. In MRP, the current state of demand is modeled through the open sales order. Minimum inventory levels, open production orders and forecasts. So there are some demand and there are some supplies that we are addressing in MRP run. You can choose to include or exclude entire categories of demand. For example, an MRP run can be configured to look only at the sales order and ignore the forecast or alternatively to have actual orders consume forecasted quantities to avoid inflating inventories. In the example in front of us on this current slide, we will look only at the sales order as our demand. We see that the sales order for the quantity of 15 printers has been entered. When we run MRP, we get the suggested set of purchase orders or production orders. 
these suggested purchase and production orders can be converted easily to actual orders in our example the MRP run creates a recommendation for production order for printers and recommendation for purchase order for its components so our MRP is giving a suggested production order for 15 of the printers to fulfill this sales order and because we need to fulfill this production order we need to have the components and that's why MRP is again suggesting us to purchase the rela related components and their related quantities so it starts from the demand the supply and now this is converted into demand and this becomes the supply so this fulfills this and this will fulfill this MRP considers the existing stock sales forecast and existing purchase and production orders let us look at a more complex example showing how existing inventory and purchase orders can affect MRP before the MRP run there are 20 pieces of purchased item in stock additionally there will be receipts for 30 pieces from an existing purchase order the requirements are of 40 pieces which will be needed for an existing sales order it is planned that the sales forecast that 50 pieces and later time 30 pieces will be required for the printers so in the timeline above we have our supply and in the timeline below we have our demand after MRP run recommendations for purchase orders have been generated to fulfill the requirements MRP considered the existing stock existing purchase orders production orders and sales forecasts so here it is giving me recommendation of purchasing 20 pieces then again purchasing 20 pieces and again purchasing 20 pieces in the next session we will see the key elements to planning thank you